I was wondering if I should put on my ring light or not. Hmm. There we go. That's kind of better. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it has been a minute since I filmed a video. Um, most of the videos that you guys have been watching have been pre-filmed a while back. Um, or, you know, it's been a while since I've sat down in my room and filmed, basically. Um, so today I wanted to do a Q&A because I have gotten a lot of new subscribers recently. So hi, welcome to my channel. Um, there are videos already on my channel probably answering half the question you got half of the questions you guys are asking so before commenting down below questions just check my channel um because i do have a fair few videos about half of like when i'm reading through the comments i'm like guys there's videos on this just because i don't want to have to keep answering the same questions over and over again however there are a lot of questions that i have not answered or have been been asked and asked and asked so I thought I would sit down and answer some of them and I also just want to do a quick disclaimer and say that this video is a bit more non-PG, like it's more M, like a 15 plus kind of video, because um, I'm going to be talking about things like my relationship, like sex, I don't know, all the things that you guys want to know. So like I said, if you're not really interested in that kind of thing then Maybe this video isn't for you, but as I'm getting older, I want to steer my channel in a bit more of a mature direction, if that makes sense. So my first my first question is from Lainey, and she says, So I'm another chronically ill babe in, serious long -term, in a serious long-term relationship like you and Tom. So my question is, how do you keep stuff spicy when you're chronically ill? And what advice would you give to couples in similar situations to you? Obviously, I know you aren't an expert. Um, but you guys just celebrated your five year anniversary so you must be doing something right, love you both. So I want to do eventually do a uh, video where I sit down with Tom and we answer some questions like this together. Um, especially now that he's a bit more comfortable around the camera. Um, but I think the secret, I don't think there's any you know secret to making a relationship work when you're chronically ill because it puts so so much strain and stress on your relationship and it can be really really tough to kind of get through that basically you know every situation every relationship is different so every you know you're, you're all gonna handle things differently but for me and tom um humor and laughing is a big part of our relationship you know when we're in serious situations and i'm like you know in hospital and i'm really sick or when i have been really sick you know we've kind of handled that situation by Kind of picking it apart a bit and you know looking at the kind of comical side like there was a time when i was actually paralyzed and i couldn't walk um this was not from like a spinal injury this was to do with like um a condition called hyperkalemic periodic paralysis which i'm not going to get into but basically i became paralyzed for a short period of time and i basically had to learn to walk again and it was probably one of the most stressful periods that i never talked about this on my youtube before but it was a very, very, very tough time for Tom and I, and we kind of joked about it and said, oh, oh, you can't walk, and, you know, like, we just, like, kind of went about it that kind of way, and obviously that's not for everybody, some people may get offended by that, but that was the way that we chose to deal with it, and that worked for us, and that has worked for us, so basically I guess my advice to you is find something that works for you to get through those tough times, and then as far as like in the bedroom keeping it spicy, um, uh, I like I can't do a lot of out there sexual positions, shall we say. Like I have to kind of keep it very basic because of my joints, they dislocate super easy. So as you can imagine, sex can be very um, difficult. I just kind of, the way I spice things up is with underwear or lingerie. Um, I just kind of, you know find a nice piece or pieces um and i wear that to kind of spice things up rather than i don't know weird positions that i can't do um because you know and then there's also if you really want to spice things up you can also experiment with like toys um in the bedroom um and i do mean sexual toys <laughs> they're my kind of tips of what i do you know it might not work for you but it might work for you and then I actually have another question that somebody asked the other day. What do you do if you get dislocations during intimate time? If I get a dislocation, whether it's in the bedroom or not, 
Tom helps me put them back in sometimes. Um, sometimes we kind of just stop what we're doing. Like sometimes we're joking around, laughing about, and then something pops. Sometimes it's just, you know, straight back in. By the time it can be like a manipulation kind of thing where you have to really kind of work to get it back into the joint. And it's super painful sometimes. And like, I can be crying and it's just awful. So in that case, we just kind of have to stop what we're doing and get it back in. And then we not, might not necessarily go back to the activity we were doing, if you know what I'm I'm saying. not sure I understand. Sorry. Yeah, we might not go back to the activity we were doing. Another topic I just want to address um, was people seem to think that I have a twin sister. I never said, I've never ever said I've had a twin sister. Um, I said I had a twin. Never said it was a sister and that's all I want to touch on that subject. I don't really want to go into that at all so please don't ask any more questions. Um, it's not something I want to talk about on my channel. Um, at least not at this point in time, but I just wanted to mention that in the video because I've noticed that there's quite a few questions about it. Okay, the next question is, how do you pay for all of your medical stuff? Do you get money from YouTube to pay for it? Um, so I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I do get paid from YouTube. Um, however, this is quite a recent occurrence because I haven't always been paid from YouTube. When I first started, I did it because I loved making videos and I wanted to kind of spread awareness for chronic illness um etc but as of now or as of june last year um i stopped getting any sort of financial aid from the government um and i haven't had anything since so my sole income is youtube um and i do go through the public system with my health so a lot of it is i don't have to pay for it like all my appointments i don't have to pay for because i go through the public system um, most of my procedures and operations, I don't have to pay for those. Um, however, there are certain things I do have to pay for, like my catheter supplies. My TPN is covered, thankfully. Feed is covered, thankfully. But all the other things, like the giving sets, the syringes, um, yeah, all of my catheter stuff, um, all of my other supplies, all of my medications, I have to pay for that myself. Um, so it's a bit of... <laughs> You know, there's pros and cons, um, but if I was going through private health, then I would definitely have to pay for a lot more. Um, so I guess I'm lucky in that kind of sense. And I do have Medicare. Um, I don't know if you guys have that where you live, um, but here in Australia, we have Medicare and they cover certain things. Like you can get money back from them, um, like a certain amount. You still have to pay for things, but they, you'll get some back from them. So I guess that's how I pay for things. Um, but yes, I pay for it from YouTube, basically. This was from Sierra. Um, she goes, I'm generally curious when it comes to asking if you and Tom reach a point where you wish to have children of your own, are you able to carry the baby? And could your baby possibly have EDS due to your condition being through genetics? Is it a major risk to your health? Apologies if these in questions are too intrusive and you don't have to answer if you don't wish. So I am happy to answer this. I have answered this um, in vlogs, but obviously not all of you guys watch my vlog channel. So, you know, you might not know that I've answered this before. Um, and it's kind of like a three part question. So the first question is, yes, I absolutely want to have my own children one day, if possible. The second part of the question is, at this point in time, I am not physically able to carry a child to term. So what that means is I can't, I could conceive a child. Actually, yes, I can conceive because I literally just got my period back. So yay, celebrate for that. Um, but I cannot actually physically carry that child safely to term to be able to deliver it. Um, but I would love to have my own child. I would love, love, love more than anything in this world to have my own child. Um, and this is something that Tom, I, Tom and I have talked about and we don't, Tom, more so, doesn't want me to have a child if it's going to be at risk to me or the child. It's not that he doesn't want to have children, because he does. Um, and then kind of the third part of the question is, could your baby possibly have EDS due to it being a genetic condition? And the answer is yes. There is a 50-50 chance of my child um, having Ellis Danlos syndrome and that, ha that you know that's for every child I have it, that child has 50% chance of getting it the battery is gonna die uh, I just want to also say here that I don't want to answer any questions about my family because 
one I've already answered kind of these to a degree and two you know the, this is my family they're not they don't want their personal lives posted online like I choose to post mine online like I don't want to share private information that they don't want shared so just for future reference I'm going to be skipping past any questions relating to my sister my mom my dad etc like it's not really any of you guys's business no offense so and I said nothing is off limits I know I said that however those things are off limit this is from laura she said also you said as, as nothing is off limit is there anything that ever stops you being romantic or, or or you have to do it differently or a certain way sorry if it's too personal not too personal at all i'm happy to answer that there's lots of things that i have to do differently um but i don't want to say that my illness stops me from doing things it just i have to do things differently so for example, I used to play basketball, not like professionally, just for fun. Like I was on a team, this was when I was in secondary school and I absolutely loved it. And then I stopped playing for quite a few years and then when I wanted to go back, I physically couldn't do it anymore. Um, so now, instead of playing basketball, I go to watch basketball because it's a sport of mine that I really enjoy. And the same with football, when I was younger I used to play football. Um, and I am talking about like English football, not American football, not Australian football. Instead of playing the sport, I watch the sport. You know, I go to the games and the atmosphere is just as amazing. Obviously it's not the same playing the sport versus watching it, but it's still pretty, it's pretty close. Um, so I guess that goes, that's just an example, but I guess that it goes, I don't think this really answered the question very well, but um, it's the same for a lot of things. I just have to do things differently or for example, being romantic. Like, I guess I kind of answered that part of the question earlier when I gave you guys like some ideas um, on what I do to kind of spice up the relationship. This question is from Green and they said, what do you put on your medical bracelet? I'm getting my first one and I don't want to miss something when I get it engraved. Do you put your diagnoses in addition to allergies and medications? So my advice to, be, advice to you, if you're getting your first medical bracelet, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this little guy here. Um, this is my medical bracelet and this one is from Lauren's Hope Medical IDs. Um, I'll leave a link down below if I remember, but if not, you can probably just Google it. And I do have a review on these on my channel if you're interested. What I put and what I would recommend you guys to put is do not list every single diagnosis, every allergy. You're not going to have enough space if you'll have multiple things wrong like I do. If you've just got like diabetes or any one particular allergy, go ahead, put it on, that's fine. But if you've got like a long list of things, like myself, um, then you're better off sticking to the things that, that are most important and that are most, I don't know, the things that affect you are most, the most, I guess. First I put my name, then I put my diagnoses that affect me the most and that if I'm going to become unconscious from something or something's going to happen to me, it's going to be one of these. So I start with my name. Then I've got my diagnosis, so I've got EDS type 3, and the type 3 is important because there's many types of EDS. POTS, which, you know, I faint because of it so I can easily be found unconscious and that could be the cause. Um, SVT, which is a kind, it's a basically a, 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 like an arrhythmia where your heart's not beating in the right rhythm. It's not extremely dangerous but if it goes on for too long it can be gastroparesis obviously it's my stomach paralyzed mcad which stands for mast cell activation disorder which can be mild to severe allergic reactions and i do carry an epipen on me heart murmur comma tube fed and lastly i've got ice which means in case of emergency and it's just got tom harris written there and then his phone number so they're the things that i've put on mine which i think is quite a like a decent bit of information um and again there are things on there that aren't necessarily 100 percent relevant so my advice to you would be to stick to the things that you really need to put on there oh this is a good one this is a good one i guess this is kind of like a relationship q a it's kind of turning into one this one is from chloe and they and she said obviously you and tom have a great relationship and i feel like you two are great together 
um, and I don't want to offend you as I'm curious. Um, do you ever feel like your chronic illness is a burden on him or worry that it might be too much for him? Also, I, I th this is not implying what I think he thinks. I'm curious as to whether you feel like this sometimes. And the answer is yes. I feel like this a lot. Um, there has times when I've literally just broken down crying. I'm like, just why? I'm just like, why are you with me? Like, just leave me. Like, I don't want... Like, I just want you to go out and have like a normal girlfriend and a normal life. Like, you deserve better than me. Like, that's how I feel a lot of the time. And I get upset about it a lot. But Tom always just reassures me and, and he's like, just, he's, he's like, don't be stupid. Like, I'm here for a reason. Like, I've stuck around for a reason. Like, we've been through so much together. I'm not just gonna leave now. And I'm just like, yeah, but if you could leave, would you, like, would you, like, do, you know, do you want to leave? Like, it's a part of you that feels that way. And he's like, no, like, he's never, he's never made me feel like, like I'm a burden, you know, even if I feel like I am, like, he's never, ever made me feel that way. That was a terrible answer to the question, but. Moving on. This one is from Robin. It said, I was wondering if you ever get frustrated with not being able to eat a meal with Tom. Like your anniversary dinner, do you miss certain foods more than others? It's not that I miss certain foods more than others. It's certain situations, especially social situations, um, where I'm just kind of like, F it, and I'm going to do it anyway. Because it's just, there's so much pressure from, like, everything is such a food orientated, um activity if that's the right word like until you have food taken away from you you don't realize how much of a social thing it is but yes i miss food a lot i do eat i choose to eat a lot though with that said just because that's my choice and when i make that choice i know that yes five minutes from now five hours from now wherever it may be 50 hours from now i'm going to be sick but like, i just know that because my body just cannot digest food. But at the same time, I've learned to live with it. You know, I'm making that conscious decision to eat, so then I'm making that conscious de decision to vomit later. Okay, this one is from Chronic Butterfly, and she says, as a zebra myself, I was wondering, are you concerned about the effects to your liver and kidneys with the medications you take and any alcohol you drink on top of them? When I first started like taking medication, I was told not to drink alcohol. Um, because we didn't know if that was going to be like a long-term thing, short-term thing. Um, then, as I have been on these medications for so so many years now, um, I've just gone out right and asked my like doctors. I've been like, can I drink alcohol? And they've said yes. So my doctors are aware that I'm on the medications I'm on, and they're aware that I drink alcohol. Now, when I say I drink alcohol. I, yes, I ingest it, but it, I just drain it out again. However, I do realise that a small amount of this might get absorbed, so it, you know, in turn might be affecting my liver. However, I do not drink volumes and volumes. I will have a glass of, or whatever, you know, I'm going to have like a shot of Malibu with orange juice, you know. I'm not drinking bottles and bottles of wine a week maybe one bottle a week, if that. Maybe like one bottle per two weeks or something. That's how much I drink. Now, if, as far as my medications go for affecting my kidneys and my liver, obviously being on TPN, there is risk of my liver being affected and my liver is affected from it. Um, when I first started TPN, my liver really, really struggled for quite a few weeks. My doctors were really worried and they thought that we would have to stop the TPN because my liver was doing so badly. And then it started to improve, my liver function improved. My kidneys are up and down, um, but obviously that to do with like dehydration as well, not necessarily my medication. I don't think I'm on any medication that affects my kidneys, but um, I know for a fact that TPN affects my liver, um, and I still know that my liver function isn't great, but it's a lot, lot better than what it was, so. I guess, I hope that kind of answers your question. This is a good one. This is from Kenzie and she said, what is the most important thing when balancing chronic illness and relationship? Your health 100% always comes first because without your health, your good health, what like, you know, if I didn't look after myself, I wouldn't be here and then I wouldn't be here to work on my relationship. So health is your number one priority. However, my relationship comes a very close second, and even Tom puts my health before our relationship. 
Um, so if that doesn't say priorities, then I don't know what does. So my health always comes first, obviously. Um, but like I said, my relationship is a close second. And Tom and I are both on the same, you know, we see eye to eye on that subject. And if I don't put my health first, he is on it like a car bonnet. So don't have to worry about that. This one is from Chronically Lynn's and she says, what's your plan for your vlogging channel and your main channel? So like I said at the beginning of this video, I want to, I'm going to carry on vlogging. I don't ever see an end in sight, at least not now. Um, however, my main channel, I want to steer in a bit more of a mature direction and I want to produce content that I like watching. You know, like I said, I'm getting older now, I'm 23 this year and I want to make more, I don't want to say more mature videos, but some of the topics that I talk about might not necessarily be kid friendly. Um, like I talked about sex in this video, you know, that's not for everyone. I talked about stuff in the bedroom, again, some people aren't comfortable you know, being open about these things. So I guess, you know, that is my answer. I don't know, I just wanna keep doing what I'm doing and just produce content that I like, that I'm comfortable with and yeah. Okay, this is from Georgie's Journey and she said, who inspires you the most both in your life and on social media? This is so hard because I literally have so, so many people that inspire me. I've got so many friends that I look up to every single day. Like they, you know, they go through what I go through. And I sometimes I'm just like days when I just feel like I can't do it anymore. Like I look at them and I'm like, how are you still like, how are you carrying on? Like you're so inspiring to me. And I could literally name so many people. I'm not going to name people because I'm going to be upset that when I edit this back that I've forgotten other people. Tom is a huge inspiration to me. I'm going to talk about some celebrities that really inspire me. Um, let's see. These are celebrities that kind of go through their own battles as well, like Lady Gaga, um, Jessie J, um, Selena Gomez, ooh, um, what's her name? Is it Bethany Hamilton? It is Bethany Hamilton. Yeah, Bethany Hamilton, she's a surfer, she lost her arm in a, like, surfing like a shark bit her arm off and she's so so inspiring to me the way she like I, I watched the film soul surfer they actually made a film about her life or about how she lost her arm and then how she like came back and like continued surfing and she didn't give up and she's just so inspirational to me so literally i could name so many people avril lavigne is another one like literally there's so many like celebrities that have gone through like their own health struggles like mental or physical health and that i look up to and they still carry on doing what they're doing so yeah they're a few of my inspirations oh this is a good one so this is from llama lord and they said who is your favorite animal in fantastic beasts mine is the niffler mine is the niffler too in fact where is my handbag because I actually have it on my car key. Oh, we can hear the keys jingling. I don't know why my camera just randomly stopped recording. But on my keys, I actually have little Newt with his little briefcase and the Niffler, which is my all time favorite character. So, so cute. Who else wishes there was Fantastic Beast books before the films? I know there's like the screenplays now, but I mean, come on. They're not the same as the Harry Potter reading experience. And by that, I do mean, you know, we all experienced the Harry Potter books growing up as children, and then we got to see the films made. Like, I wish there was that for the Fantastic Beasts films. Right, I'm gonna try and wrap this up with a few more questions. Um, and then if you guys wanna see a part two, I can maybe film a part two. We shall see. Probably won't get around to doing it though, if I'm being honest, I know what I'm like. This is actually from a fan account, uh, Amy Lee Fisher X um, said, what would your name for your fans be if you had one? I have no idea. I call you guys my family on my vlog channel. I was like, good morning family, but I don't really have a name for us. So if you guys could think of a name for my fans, gosh, that sounds weird saying that. What fans? I'm a no one, really. I don't consider myself famous or a YouTuber or anything like that. I'm just me, I'm doing me. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be myself and 
I don't ever ever think of myself that way. And this one is from Bright Future Babe. And they said, how is your mental health going? I think you mentioned you were taking antidepressants. And that is true. My mental health is really, really good right now. I actually started taking an antidepressant for uh, pain. Um, the one I take is called Juloxetine. I started on 30 milligrams. I'm now on 60 milligrams. Um, and like I said, I originally started taking that for pain. Um, and then I realized of how much it actually changed my mental health and my moods and just the, my thoughts in general, like the way I was thinking. So yeah, uh, I do take an antidepressant. Uh, I take it for pain and for mental health and it has seriously helped me so much. I couldn't imagine not being on it now. This is from Renee Lima and they said, does it help you to talk does it help you to t sometimes talk to people who have the same condition as you yes and no so i have quite a few friends that have the same conditions as me conditions as me and i feel like sometimes people get so caught up in their conditions and it being sick and i feel like sometimes you can kind of get into this habit of thinking i really don't want to say this the wrong way and i really don't want to offend people but sometimes people can and I've, I've caught myself doing it before where you start comparing yourself to other people with your condition where you go well they're not as sick as you like that's not fair like you start getting jealous that they have the same condition but they've got it they don't have it as bad or they don't have the gastro problems like you do you know you can't think like that so in that sense no I don't like talking to people who have the same condition as me but then at the same time which this is 90% of the time I love talking to them. They can relate to your situation. Like you laugh about, you know, times when you dislocate something, um, doing something stupid, like having sex or whatever. Um, and you know, you joke about it and they get it. Like they can seriously relate to your like problem. Um, so in that sense, I love it. And like I said, that happens 99% of the time. It's not a lot of the time that I end up thinking like that, but I do, I have had moments where I have compared myself to other people. Everyone compares themselves, like, I get that that's a thing. Not just with chronic illness, you know, everyone, like you're walking down the street and you go, oh my gosh, that girl's hair is so lovely and thick and long and your hair's all thin and short and gross. Like you can't just compare yourself to everybody because that's not, that's not a healthy way of thinking. Okay, I know I said a few more questions, but this is seriously a few more questions. Okay, this one is from Kayla. Um, and they said, sorry if this, if I'm asking too much, but how is your body dysmorphia? Um, is it getting any better? But basically when I first started TPM, I went from being like 30 something kilos to 50 something, but I'm now 50 something kilos, but I went from like, like being 30 something to 40 something. I'm not going to say the exact numbers, but you can see like I was a very low weight. Um, and basically when I gained weight, because I gained it so quickly, because TPN makes you gain weight very quickly, um, especially if you're on a very high calorie TPN, which I was. So I gained weight very, very quickly and I still am gaining weight. So because I went from being so thin to gaining weight again, like my brain was like, hold up, what's going on here? And I started seeing myself so much bigger than what I was. Like when I would look in the mirror, it was like I wasn't looking at myself. It was like I was looking at somebody else. Um, and it, I, 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 in, in the mirror, I, I looked, to me, it felt like I looked huge, like massive. Like my thighs felt like this. Like it was hor like horrific. And I just couldn't see what other people could see. But then, this is the way I found that I could cope. If you guys are going through this, I asked people to take pictures of me. So I'd be like, I'd be like, Tom, take a picture of me quick. So he'd just like snap a picture, show me, and then I could see what I actually looked like. That was the way I got around it. And I get that that might not work for everybody, but that worked for me. For me, like the only time that I could see what I truly looked like was through pictures. So yeah my body dysmorphia is so so much better like i look in the mirror and i see me how i am now um i love the new me you guys have commented how much healthier i look and how much better i look somebody i read a comment it's like you look so much better with meat on your bones and i thought yeah girl this one is from ella and she says how do you deal with having a terminal illness you are an, you are amazing so i wouldn't call my illness terminal um, like at this point I don't have a death sentence however having the illnesses 
that I have and being on the medications and treatments that I am, yes, it will shorten my life compared to a normal person. But I wouldn't say I have a terminal illness. I wouldn't describe it as that. However, you know, knowing that my time is going to be up before my time, basically, you know, if I wasn't ill, would I live a lot longer? Probably. But I can't think like that. I can't live that way. You know, it's not, it's not mentally healthy to think like that. Basically, what I mean is, I wouldn't call my illness terminal and I just take every day as it comes. Oh, I like this one. This isn't really crying film related, but I feel like it's like a kind of a bit of a fun, positive question to end the Q&A on. So this question is from Brooklyn Blue, and they said, if you could live in any movie or series, which one would it be? I'm going to pick a movie and I'm going to pick a series because I love this question. Actually, I'll name two series because there's two series. Okay, so if I could live or be in a film, it would be Harry Potter. Could you imagine being a witch or a wizard and actually like, having a wand and being able to do spells and like your room's messy, you could just be like, blah, 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 and boom, your room's clean or like your glasses are all dirty and you can be like, oh, you must repair it. And then boom, you can see out your glasses. Like, could you imagine how amazing that would be? And then as far as the films, films go, see, I would like to say The Flash because you could live in that world where superheroes existed, but you wouldn't get to be a superhero. You could just be in that world. However, if I could live in a world, I would live in Once Upon a Time. If you guys don't know what that show is, it's basically like you take like classic fairy tales like Snow White and they basically exist in the real world and like the evil queen has like put a curse on her so they don't live in the enchanted forest anymore they live in our world in like a town called Storybrooke and everyone's like um like a fairy tale character but they don't remember that they're a fairy tale character because that's the curse and it's crazy and if you haven't watched it you have to go watch it so i would live in that town because eventually the curse gets broken and they all remember who they are and Prince Charming and Snow White like they're like oh yeah we remember and then they go back and they're like together again and everything's a happy family anyway i would be a fairy tale character how cool as long as i wasn't like a random villager number 12 that gets killed by the evil queen no thank you i'd like to be like Snow White or Cinderella or something, something good. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. If you do want me to do another one of these in the future, I would absolutely love to do it because I've got so many questions. There's no way I could answer all of them. However, I might do a live stream at some point um, and kind of answer some of those questions on my live stream um, because I feel like there's some people that missed out on me answering their questions and realistically this video could like literally go on forever. So. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please do give it a big thumb, thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to join the family. And if you have any questions relating to today's questions, then do comment them down below. But also please check my main channel before you do, because I might have already answered these questions in other videos. Like I've done a video about my EDS diagnosis. I've done a video um, about like, pots you know i've done lots of different videos and um, so you might already ha have the answer you're looking for in one of my videos so please go check my channel first before you comment down below but anyway other than that i love you guys so much please subscribe please like and give it a big thumbs up well, isn't liking giving you a big thumbs up the same thing i don't know just do it anyway please and also hit that um post notification bell button so it will notify you when I upload and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.